While Elementor is a fantastic visual page builder for WordPress, it does have a couple of key deficiencies. One of the main ones is the ability to globally style various elements. You've got some basic controls in there, but not a lot of real granular controls. Now, I know this is something they're looking to update and add in in a future version of Elementor. However, today we're going to be taking another look at Analog WP, which recently added in style kits. Now, style kits are a great way of applying global styling throughout your entire site with one simple click. So today we're going to revisit Analog WP and I'm going to show you those new features in a lot more detail. My name is Paul C and this is WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If it's the first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so let's go over to the dashboard now and let's install Analog WP and take a look at how we start working with it. So I'm going to head on over. I'm already in the plugin section and I've searched for Analog WP. I'm going to click on install now for the style kits for Elemental. Once we've done that, then we're going to be good to go. Okay, so let's just activate that. That will activate the plugin and then we can start setting things up. We now have a new section inside the dashboard. You can see we've got style kits and inside there we currently have four different options. What we're gonna do first of all is take a look at the settings section because this is where we can configure a, a range of different things for the plugin itself. Now it's worth bearing in mind before we start taking a look at what you can do with these style kits that Analog WP isn't just style kits. You also have a range of great looking free templates you can start to pull in and use these as the basis of building your websites. So you do get a kind of two for one on this, but obviously if you don't want to use the templates you just want the style kits then you have full access to that and you don't need to worry about any of these okay so let's come back over to the settings section before we take a look at the style kits we have a couple of simple options we can go through the element of settings and you can see it says sync color palettes and style kits color by default now normally when you're working with elementor you have the option to enable and disable global colors and some global styling this will allow you to do that inside the settings here You've also then got usage data tracking, which is entirely up to you if you want to allow the developers to track the kinds of things you do and what data is collected. I'd always recommend checking the more info if you are thinking of doing this. Then you've got the rollback version. So as we get newer versions of the plugin, we can roll back to older versions should we encounter any problems, which is a great feature to see. Then we've got template settings. You can see it says remove styling from typographic elements. So if you've gone through and you've already applied some styling, you've overridden the sort of the default and you've created some custom styling, this will allow you to control those aspects inside your templates. And finally, we have remove data on an install. Now, anyone that's watched my recent videos will know that I love this option when it's added into plugins and themes. Anywhere you install something, just to test it out for whatever reason, there's going to be times in the future where you may no longer want it. Well, the ability to remove any data that's part of that plugin or theme when you uninstall it means that you clear out all that junk that could be left behind inside your database files and so on it just cleans all that up so to any of the developers that may be watching this please put that option into your plugin it's something we all need to have in there okay so we can check anything we want so we can say remove data on and install you can see there's no save button this will do it through ajax we'll just update that as we make changes now the template settings where we've got the remove styling, we're only using the hello theme, so there's not really much need for this. And like I say, I would always check out the more info so you get a good solid understanding of what any of these settings is doing. So we'll leave that as is. We'll scroll up, rollback version is fine. We don't want to allow data tracking. And we've got the sync color palette and sync and style kit colors by default. The element of color palette would be populated with the style kit's global colors. I would say that's probably something that's quite useful. So we can just check on that and that will update those settings. Okay, so now we've done that, let's come back and take a look at the style kits themselves. Now, you can see at the moment we only have four, but these are pre-designed ones, which we can use as the basis for anything we want. We can use them as they are, or we can just ignore them and start building our own. For simplicity, let's take a look at loading one of these in so we can see how these global styles will change things on our site. Let's first of all start off with something like this Barlow. So we'll just say import. That will go through and say, there we go. It's now imported. We can manage our style kits if you want to, and that'll take us to another window, which I don't want to do right now. So I'm going to close that down. So we've now loaded in a new style kit. So what we can do is if we come over and take a look at one of our pages. So let's come over and start off with all our pages and take a look in there. Now within our pages section, all your posts, anywhere you want to apply these, or even your templates, what we can do is we can quickly apply a style kit to any of these pages. So let's just say, for example, the team page, we want to do a sign it. We could go in and edit with Elementor and go through the manual process of doing it. Or if we know everything is in place, 
we can simply come up, say quick edit. You see we now have a new entry called style kit. We can click and any of the style kits we have loaded in will be available. So if I choose analog Barlow, for example, at this point, that will then assign this to that particular page and then we'll have all those settings in place for the page. However, we can also do it in other ways. Let's cancel that. Let's come in and say, let's edit with Elementor. Let's load the Elementor editor in, and then we can take a look at where we get access to that. Now, the first time you load this in, you can see it says, meet the style kits by style kits for Elementor. Do we want to view the styles? Well, we've already kind of done that. Let's just say, got it. We now have the editor open as normal. So everything looks the way we'd expect it to with all the styling we've set up previously. Now, if we come down to the little cog for the settings on the left-hand side, we can click inside there. And if we come up to the Styles tab, we now have all these extra options, which are part of the Style Kits, the Analog WP plugin. So what we can do, first of all, very first option is to come in and choose any of the Style Kits we have or in the Style Kits we've created and then load it in. So let's just say we'll try the Analog Barlow. We can click on that and you can see now any of the page changes. Well, nothing really happens, does it? Let's just get rid of that. And well, nothing's happening. So why isn't it happening? Well, let me show you. Let's just come back out of this. So exit to our dashboard. We'll leave this, even though we've made some changes to it. That doesn't matter. What we're going to do is we're going to come into Elementor. We're going to come into Settings. And from there, you can see we have these two boxes, Disable Default Colors and Disable Default Fonts. So what's kind of happening is we're finding that Elementor is overriding what we want to try to set up. So let's just disable those. Save our changes. We're going to come back in now to our pages. So we're going to come back into All Pages. We'll go back into our team page and edit that with Elemental. Once we've done that, we're going to go down to our settings again, and we're going to take a look at applying those settings. So come down to the settings section, come back over to styles. I'm going to come into here, choose analog Barlow, and you can now see all the fonts update to give us that new styling. That's the analog Barlow styling. So it's very, very easy to make those changes and apply that then globally. Just make sure, like I say, you're going and uncheck or going to check those two boxes in Elementor to make sure that you are then allowing you to do exactly what you want and start applying these global styles of the style kit. And before we dive a little deeper into how we can start making changes to all the different settings and creating our own style kits, let's just update this page so we've got the style kit applied to it. And then we're gonna back out of this once it's saved. So we're gonna come back out, exit to our dashboard, and we're gonna come back into all our pages. Now let's go ahead and load another style kit in and then we can see how easy it is to change between those and how we can see all those changes reflected in real time. Come back into style kits, we're going to come into our template section. From there we can just quickly choose style kits and we're going to load in the pop-ins. So we'll import that one. Once that's imported, we'll close that down and come back to our pages and all pages. Come back down to our team and we're going to edit that. And we're going to edit with Elemental. And once we've done that, we're going to go back into our style settings come down to the cog in the settings, into styles. Let's just change that over to analog pop-ins. And you can see now everything updates on that page. But bear in mind, it's only this page that's going to update because even though we're doing global styling and we can make changes globally, that style kit has to be applied to the page for it to make any changes. So let me just demonstrate what I mean. Let's just update this page and go over to the site itself. So I come back over, we'll refresh the page. So this is our home page. As you can see, all the fonts and styling are different than what we have inside the team page, which is now using our new styling. Let's just refresh that to make sure everything is in place. And if we want to check that, I'm going to come up, I'm going to use this little what font plugin. I'm going to come over and you can see that's using pop-ins. So all those are styled using pop-ins exactly as we'd expect. And if we come back over to the home section, let's just exit that. And we do the same again, come back into the fonts. You can see this is using a different font altogether. So because we haven't applied that style kit to this page, it's using the default style that I've set up. So let's just come in and see an easy way of changing that. Come back out of this, we'll exit, exit to our dashboard. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come back into our pages or pages, and let's do the home page. Let's come onto there and let's just say we want to do a quick edit. We come down and we're gonna choose, choose analog pop-ins and we'll update that page. Come back over to our home page and refresh that. And we'll find now that all our styling has changed to pick up the font styling that we have as part of our style kit. So you can see you don't need to go into each and every page and start making these changes. Once you've set things up and you want to apply it to any of the pages you've created or posts or anything, you can easily do it directly through that. Okay, so that's how easy it is. And you can see now once we create something like this and we apply that styling to it, you can see we have apply global style kit and that will apply that to it. If we make changes to it, we can just update and make sure it's using the 
proper version that we want it to be. So hopefully that kind of makes sense and shown you that it's very easy to actually apply these style kits, load them in. Now let's take a look at how we can start creating, editing and making all changes to it. So let's use our team page as an example, because this has quite a lot of fonts and things on there. So let's come down, take a look at the styling that we have come back in and we've already seen the first section you can see we've got the page style loaded in if we make changes to this we can update our style kit so we can make changes to those predefined ones and then we can update those or if we want to we can save as and create our own so we'll take a look at that in a moment you can see we also say we can set a global style kit here so any new pages will be set up and use that style kit so let's just click on that we'll open up a new tab and we can take a look so you can see if we scroll down now under the elemental settings, underneath the style tab, you can see we have a new option that says the global style kit. So which is the style kit we're going to use? If we click, you can see any of the style kits we've loaded or created will be listed in here. So any page we create, we can have it use that by default as the global style kit. We'll leave that as it is. Like I say, it's there, so it's very, very useful, but I want to demonstrate how we can make changes and update things. Come back out of this. Now we have a ton of options available. Some of these were there before, but a lot of them are new because of the style kit plugin. Now I'm not gonna go over all of these because I covered a lot of these in the original video, but I'm gonna show you just some of the basic things that we have. Things like the head and typography. We can just choose that. So you can see at the moment, this is Poppins because that's part of the style kit that we set up. However, we can, if we want to change that to anything else. So let's just say we don't wanna change it to, well, we'll just change it to this, Portano Sans. And you can see that changes everything inside there now to use that font. So all our headings will now use that font. We can do the same thing if we come to body typography, we can come in there, click, and you can see Poppins is being used. And we can say, well, let's just change that to Open Sans, for example change now anywhere that body typography is being used those changes will apply to that particular layout so we can come in and fine-tune and control any of these things very very easily then we can do is come back to our style kits and we can update that style kit or we could save it as a new style kit so let's just say we'll say save as we're going to call this one wp tuts test styles and we'll just save that so now we've created our own version using that original style kit as the basis for our modified version. Now, if we take a look at the style kits at the top, you can see WP Touch Test Styles is the one that's actually loaded in. However, if we want to, we can click and you can see we've still got the analog barlow and analog poppins in there. So if I want, I can just restore it back to what it was originally, or we can come back in and choose a different style kit altogether, or I can easily come back in and say WP Touch Test Style, which is easier to say than you'd think. And you can see that now updates everything on there. So it's very simple to make those changes. Same things go when we come down to text sizes and things. You can see we have the option to come in and use XXL, XL, and so on. It's up to you what you want to do with this, with the sizing. You can use your normal layout method if you want to, where you can use pixels or points and things. Or you can come in and you can set up a global text style using XXL, large, medium, small, and those kinds of things. It's entirely up to you. And again, when you come into the headings, you can do the same thing in there for the headings. Then when it comes down to your text sizes and things like your headings, we come in there, you can see heading one, we click, that's using 65 pixels. But if we wanted to, we could change that and just use any other values we want. So we've got a lot of control over how we size things, how we lay things out, what units of measurement we want to use for all these different things. Global colors, if we come in there, you can see we can set any global colors we want. And if we come down, we've got things like buttons and so on. We can change things in there, the sizes of those, all those kinds of good things. We also have some really nice useful things like outer section padding, column gaps, and so on. So these are things that out of the box, Elementor gives you some control over, but not a nice finite, you know, sort of granular level of control. So if you want to, you can come in and control exactly any column gaps that are going to be used, the default, narrow, extended, and so on, as opposed to using those arbitrary values that Elementor imposes on you. Like I say, I covered this in a lot more detail in the other video, and I'll put those, the link to that in the description so you can check that if you want. Now, tools is useful at the bottom. You can come in there, and if you've gone through and you made a pile of changes and you think, I don't like this, or I just want to reset everything on this, you can do that directly inside here. So you can reset all styling, or if you want to, you can export this as a custom CSS file. So you could very easily install analog WP, make the changes you want, and then you could export that CSS file out and you could use that on another site if you wanted to without the need to use this particular plugin. Or you could disable the plugin and just apply the CSS through your theme or your custom CSS options inside there. And you can see we also got do not apply link color on active titles, up to you if you want to enable or disable that. 
So let's just update this now. So we've got the new version using our customized style kit. Now come back over and take a look at our page. Let's come back into our team section. And you can see if we come over and choose the little font picker, you can see we're now using the fonts that we chose, Open Sans and Pontano Sans. Nice. However, obviously the home page is still using the default settings we set up. So let's come back into this, exit out of this and exit to our dashboard. And because we create our own custom style, we can now easily come in and we can just come into our home page, for example, we'll quick edit. And now our new custom style is listed inside there. We can click and update. And now if we come back to our page and refresh, that will now pick up our new styling. So you can see it's super, super easy to be able to make changes, to use those as the basis, to apply them to pages. It's just awesome. It's just one of those things that out of the box, Elementor should be able to do this. And like I say, hopefully it will be able to but I love this particular plugin. Now this is just, just scratching the surface of what you can do with Analog WP and those style kits. You can really get creative and create some really good looking websites and then apply that styling throughout your site and then export it if you want to and all those kinds of good things. Now this was just an overview of the update to Analog WP. I'd encourage you to get stuck in, download it. And the reason I say that is because it has the pricing structure that I absolutely love with things like this. It's completely free. So the barrier to entry well, is zero. So download it, test it, and see what you think. And as always, leave those comments in the comment section below what you think of Analog WP. Have you used it before? Is this new to you? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to get your feedback. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below so you can check this out and get up to speed with what you can do with it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's perfectly fine. And as always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.